All right, hey, this is Horner. We're going to look at number 25 through number 30 for the AP Physics C pretest uh, questions for uh, rotational motion. So you have a satellite of mass m moving in a circular orbit with a radius r and a constant speed v. So true statements about this satellite include which of the following. So for number 25, probably the easiest thing to see here is that um, the first one is the angular speed is v over r. Remember we uh, made a table, we said the uh, linear uh, equivalent of anything that's angular is really just equal to that angular thing times the radius. So if we have a velocity, that's going to be equal to its um, angular analog, which is uh, omega, which is the angular speed or velocity, times r. And so for what we're doing here, we know that angular speed should be equal to V over R. So this statement is definitely true. Its tangential acceleration is zero. Well, remember, tangential acceleration is equal to the radius times the angular acceleration. And angular acceleration is equal to the change in the position over the change in time. And if the tangential velocity is not changing and the radius isn't changing, then the angular velocity is changing and therefore the angular acceleration, this guy right here, is zero. So the tangential acceleration is also zero. If this is zero, then this guy is zero. So, so far we know one and two are both true. Let's go to the answers. It can't be one. It can't be B. It definitely can't be C, and obviously it can't be D. So just by looking at those two, we found our answer. It has to be E. Let's make sure this is right. The magnitude of the centripetal acceleration is constant. Remember, that's also equal to radial acceleration, which is V squared over R. And because our V here is not changing, uh, then we're set. Neither our V nor our R is changing, so that is also constant. Pretty simple to do as long as you just kind of take your time, work through it, and then stop every once in a while and think. Just make sure, do I need to do more? If not, I'm going to go ahead and answer and go on. So for number 26, a particle moves in the xy plane with the coordinates it's given by. So these uh, you should recognize are just the couple of graphs that we've done before where uh, x position is equal to a times the cosine of uh, omega t. And you'll notice that A here is, if you remember, is the amplitude of the curve. But if I take these two things and I think about rotational motion, as a circle moves, it does the same thing. So it goes up, comes back down, and then back to the original spot. So this circle and this are the same thing. You can think about the uh, sine or cosine graph. So actually, if this is cosine and it's positive, we know it'd start here, come down, and come back up. But I think this one makes it look more like a circle. So our A, if you recognize right here, would fit there. And so A is actually the radius. The uh, omega here is 2 radians per second, which is angular velocity. And we do have an equation that we can relate the two. We know that the um, centri that the um, acceleration of the object is centripetal. We could use v squared over r, but the easier thing to do is use r is equal to omega squared. Uh, so here acceleration is equal to uh, r times omega squared. And from this, we can plug everything in. 1.5 is our amplitude, which is our r. And our omega is 2, so we just take 2 squared. Um, and at this point, we would get 6 meters per second squared. And that is your answer. For number 27, uh, this is the next one. A student is standing on a circular platform. It's free to rotate without friction about center. The student jumps off tangentially, setting the platform spinning. Quantities that are conserved for the student platform system as the student include which of the following? Well, it's definitely angular momentum. So when the student pushes using Newton's third law in one direction, uh, it goes one way. A uh, student goes one way. So here we've got our student standing on a platform. And student jumps this way, sends the platform spinning this way. So our angular momentum is conserved. However, our linear momentum is not. So linear momentum is not conserved. And because this is a good example of an explosion, uh, kinetic energy is not uh, conserved either. So your answer here is letter A.
So for number 28, what you've got is you've got a bar uh, here that is attached to a pivot, and we know that it's going to fall. So as it falls, uh, it makes an angle that continues to get bigger and bigger uh, w with the vertical at any time. And so they want to know which of the following graphs best represents the bar's angular acceleration, A, or angular acceleration should be alpha, as a function of the angle. Um, we're used to doing things versus time. We're not doing that here. Here, we're doing it versus, um, you'll see that these are all uh, position, angular position. And the relationship between the two uh, is basically a square root relationship. So you should answer D for this one. That's number 28. For number 29, uh, this one says, which of the following best rep represents the bar's angular velocity as a function of time? And so the angular velocity is a function of time. We know that that velocity should increase as a function of time, and it should look very similar to this, where the derivative of that will give you the instantaneous acceleration at any particular time. So obviously what's happening to this is the, uh, the acceleration is changing uh, per unit time. Uh, and so that's why the previous graph kind of looks the way it does. That's a little bit more difficult concept uh, to do because of the way that it falls. For number 30, this is the last one. You've got a stone falling uh, from rest from the top of a building. Which of the following graphs represents the stone's angular momentum? And we know that angular momentum is equal to m times v times the uh, position, so from here to here. And then typically what you'll do with this is you'll also add the sine of the angle to it. So this is uh, angular uh, momentum uh, is equal to mvr times the sine of the angle. Remember the other way to do this is i uh, times alpha, but we don't have anything that helps us with that. So if you do that, you should uh, recognize that as the ball falls, it will pick up velocity, okay? And as it picks up the velocity, you'll also see that the radius will decrease and then start to increase again. So um, this one, the answer is actually C. So they are proportional to each other directly. The L value, the angular momentum, and the time should be, um, should be just a linear relationship. And that is number 30.